listening to Ambitious AF, a podcast that will help you level up, find positivity, and put yourself on top right now and every day for the rest of your life. I'm your host, Caroline Lewis, and each week I will bring you a guest or thought that will motivate you to get out of bed every morning with the willingness to succeed. Being ambitious means you are proud of who you are and everything you've accomplished. Only you can make that happen, though. But with the help of this podcast, you will rise to the top. You will find success. You will believe in yourself and manifest happiness. And most importantly, you will become ambitious AF. I know you are eager to begin. So let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. It is Friday, which means interview day. And I'm super, super, super excited to introduce you. And you'll soon hear from Judy. So Judy and I have met, um, I feel like it's been forever, but I guess it's only been a couple of months ago. (laughs) And good old Instagram connected us. And she is an amazing woman. So she is a professional woman's business coach, but she's also a fellow podcaster. So she has a podcast. She is extra extraordinary and I'm just excited to chat and have you all learn a little bit more about her. So Judy, welcome. Thank you so much for being on. If you could just tell everyone your story, why, you know, how you got started and I'm just so so excited to have you on. Well, Caroline, thank you. I have a girl crush on you. I found you <laughs> online uh, there on Instagram and I just loved your energy. I I loved how you were so, you're always there, like a new story pops up and it's interesting <laughs> and it's funny and it's business and it's life. And so I really appreciate that. And then we chatted and now we're working together inside my Blessed and Thrive mm-hmm. Academy. You're our go-to funnels expert. And so thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. So when you say, tell me your story, it could literally take hours, but I will (laughs) give you the abbreviated version. A little girl from a little town, one of six. I'm a twin. Uh, We were poor. Daddy was a factory worker. Mom stayed home. But this girl here, I always had big dreams. Mm -hmm. I always felt like I was going to do something big. Um, and, and I did never knew what that looked like, but I never doubted it. And so as I was growing up and I'm like, I'm going to go to college, like nobody else in my, in my family went to college. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was some doubt there, but not in my mind. And I knew we didn't have the money, but that didn't bother me. I was mm-hmm. like, I tried to be a straight A student and I'm like, I'm going to college. So ever since I was a little girl, there are two things I always wanted to be a teacher. Cause I adored my teachers. I was a teacher's pet kind of thing, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, so, um, and secondly, was a lawyer because I watched all these awesome movies with phenomenal <laughs> female lawyers. I'm like, I want to change the world. I, I want to right wrongs. That's what I want to do. But I didn't think people like me, poor folk who didn't have any connections, who didn't know anything, could go to law school. So I went to college for music ed. Long story, got out in 87. There were no jobs on the East Coast, plenty over in California. I'm an East Coast girl, didn't want to go out West. So I went in sales and I went to Macy's and I worked commission and did really great in sales. Eventually went to outside sales, which Mm -hmm. put me in dictaphone, which put me in front of lawyers. And I still remember that Friday night when I walked out of this appointment with this guy that I'm sorry, but he was a moron. (laughs) And I'm mumbling to myself in the parking lot. Wait a minute. That guy is a lawyer. I'm going to do it at the age Mm -hmm. of 26. I said, I'm doing it. And I'm not going to say I can't. Mm -hmm. No more being scared. Just go for it. So I went to Villanova Law, graduated, then got married, had kids, left the law, started my first business in 2003, um, and la, 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 lots of other things. Um, Also a real estate agent. um, But now I am a full-time and have been for years a business coach Mm -hmm. for women. Right now, women of faith, Mm because I am a strong believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I love everybody, but I decided, because we get to as business owners, Mm -hmm. I decided that I want to specifically help ambitious women of faith. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of a summary. There's so much more to tell, but that gives you an idea. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, And just even like making that decision, uh, because I mean, law school is hard. Uh, that's a big decision itself. So kind of making the decision that, you know, I loved going to law school. I loved being a lawyer. I loved doing all these kinds of things, but now I kind of want to reverse some things and help impact other women, especially women of faith. How was that transaction and how was that journey or even like that thought idea? What was that process like? 
Yeah. Well, one thing I didn't mention about myself, even as a little kid, was I always thought women were awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess because my mom. My mom was a women's liver. And, you know, she's like, never be beholden to a man. Maybe that's because my mommy was. Um, mm -hmm. Both mom and dad are gone. And she's like, always make a way for yourself. Never have to rely on a man. Take care of you. Take care of you. And so I always thought women were neat. And even now, as I get older, and, and I'm 55, so as I see women, I love how we really care about each other. Mm -hmm. I've never met a woman in business who said, I'm in it for the money. It's always, I want to help people. Mm -hmm. I have a heart for people. I want to serve people. But what I find in working with women, uh, you know, as a lawyer and in everything else I've been, done in my life, what I found is that we play too small. Mm -hmm. We think, ooh, well, they can, but I can't. Well, why not? <laughs> right? Why couldn't you? And for me, as a believer in Jesus, you know, the Bible tells us we're more than conquerors mm -hmm. in him. And with him, nothing is impossible. And so that's the mantra. I'm like, ladies, all you need to do is stop being scared mm -hmm. of what you really want and go to God and say, who am I? And then go all in on that because he's going to equip you to do everything that he's called you to. Absolutely. Uh, and then that is such an important piece of all of this because I, yeah, we still, so uh, women have done incredible things, even recently. I mean, we're always rising to the top, but I feel like only recently we are able to now find our voice and say our voice. Like we're, we're, you know, determined to actually live a life that we want to live, not what other people tell us to live. Um, so it, it's just, it's so important to know that even if you are scared, there are people that can support you. There's God that can support you. There's communities that can support you. There's so many other people that are outside of your little bubble that you can reach out to, to get you to where you want to be. And it doesn't even matter if you're 18 or 25 or 56. I mean, it doesn't even matter because you can always have this realization that I want more at any age in life and you can actually get more for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, you know, something that you touched on that I want to kind of emphasize, mm -hmm. women, for some reason, well, besides being super hard on ourselves, mm -hmm. we seem to hesitate to ask for help. Mm -hmm. We, you know, there was that study done, who was it, by Harvard Business Review or something, where it was like men and women in corporate going for promotion. Men go if they have 50% of the requirements. They just go for it. You know, they tend to have that boldness, you know, but women, and I know this was me too. You got to have at least 90% before mm -hmm. I apply, mm -hmm. right? Well, not necessarily. So what happens? The men who aren't as qualified as the women are, are applying and mm -hmm. they're getting it. Meanwhile, the women that were probably more qualified didn't even buy for that position. So we need to go for things mm. and we need to ask for help. And so if we're not sure how to get to that next level, reach out. And yeah. that's why I love being an entrepreneur in this day and age. You can totally be yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is what people connect with. Yeah. And and even to your point, like when you, when you have a business, I'm sure... Uh, more female business owners versus men. We are like, oh, I need to have all of my systems in place to launch or, oh, you know, I'm not quite as popular as so-and-so yet, so maybe I shouldn't do this yet. And we're always second guessing ourselves, uh, which I, I even did in the beginning of my business. I was like, who am I to charge for building tech? Like, who am I type of deal? But then when I started surrounding myself with the right supportive community, men and women, I realized, oh no, I can do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to continue to do this. <laughs> so it's really yeah. just like, it's like coming to that realization, but then also going and finding that community that can support you to really live whatever dream life you want. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was just talking to the ladies in the Academy yesterday. We have our weekly group coaching and mastermind session. And I said, do you ladies know that you could make five grand this week, mm -hmm. 10 grand, 20 grand? And some of them looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Like, is that what you want? Mm -hmm. Do you know you can have that? And then they're like, yeah, but yeah, but no, there's no yeah, but what mm -hmm. you got to do is connect. You know, and um, you don't have to have everything figured out. Well, if I reach out to somebody on DM, what should I say and how should I say it? Okay, we can get into those tactics, I guess, or those scripts, quote unquote. But it's really just about being authentic, asking questions. Mm -hmm. How can I help? Mm -hmm. And that's how it begins. So, yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Yeah, well, well, and I also want to touch base on 
like women in faith because it's funny because we had a we had a call I think it was I forget a couple of days ago but um, we were talking about you know inviting people to this awesome retreat that we're having and you know someone was mentioning that well because it's women in faith they were almost scared to include others because they didn't, you know, they didn't know if you should touch on faith or not touch on faith, but here you are. So you're not only a business coach, but you're a business coach for women in faith, which makes it more comfortable for them to be okay having faith, <laughs> you know? So I kind of right. want to touch a little bit on that and just realizing that you don't have to hide behind curtains anymore and you can be open, you can believe in whatever you believe in and you will still have a community that will support you in this belief. So if you want to just mm -hmm. kind of just touch base, because I'm sure, especially the entrepreneurial world, um, I feel like it's still a little taboo to say like, I'm a believer in God or I still love to go to church or yes, I do read the Bible. I think it's like still such a taboo, um, especially in the entrepreneurial world, because um, I, I don't know. I think it's because everyone's on social media and we're just afraid to say the word God even. <laughs> yeah. And see, Wow, I could. This is another topic I could talk for yeah. hours on. But a couple of things here. Let's go to the basics of entrepreneurship: mm -hmm. branding, mm -hmm. branding. You've got to stand out. Like, what are your pillars? What are your core values? And so, on the idea of authenticity and brand, we need to not be afraid to be polarizing, mm. right? And so that polarizing does not mean offensive, mm -hmm. not intentionally offensive, right? So when I say I only work with Christian women, I don't mean to offend anybody that's not a Christian, but what I will do unapologetically is say, this is who I work with. Mm -hmm. And I get to decide because I'm an entrepreneur and somebody else can decide that I work with someone who believes in whatever, right? So, but, but the people listening have to understand if you're not taking a hard line on something, whether it's your approach, whether it's a belief system, whether it's whatever it is, then you're blending in. Mm -hmm. And 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 on the way of faith, I believe that, you know, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the creator of the world, in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I'm thinking, okay, if we really take the Bible for what it is, God's word, and it is truth, absolute truth, then Christian entrepreneurs should be the most joy-filled peace-filled, mm -hmm. successful, mm -hmm. giving, and by giving we receive, like we, we should all around just be the most thriving entrepreneurs on the planet. Mm -hmm. And so if we're concerned about offending someone, you know, let's face it, we could say anything and offend someone yeah. in today's yeah. world. So, but, but faith has got to be the foundation of your business, I believe, mm -hmm. whether it is, in my opinion, the one way to God, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. or faith in whatever it is you believe in. Um, but if you, if you really don't believe that you're called to the entrepreneurial space, mm -hmm. if you don't believe it, why would anybody else believe you and want to hire you? So to me, faith is absolutely the foundation of everything we do. Oh, absolutely. And and to your point, you know, if you don't have faith in yourself, but also in others, like, how are you even getting to this position? But to that point, how are others going to see you thrive when you struggle to believe in yourself or to believe in why am I here? Right? Because we're all here for a reason. And I even did an episode of, you know, like we all have this path and we veer off and whoever you believe in will steer you back if you let him, her, you know, whoever, yeah, her, your higher power, your higher self or, or whoever that person is. And you, we steer off, but we always come back if you believe that you can get back on that track, right? And then right. when you're on that track, that's when you're going to see exponential things happen. Like that's when all of the success, finance, relationships, time, freedom, like all of that kind of stuff opens up. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be just given to you, right? We're all going to keep making mistakes. We're all going to fail. But if you get back up and keep moving forward and believe in yourself and everything around you, then you're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got all kinds of strategy and tactics, but if your mind's not right, it yeah. isn't going to work. Yeah. And so I always say, who is the best strategist ever on the world, in the world? It's God. Yeah. <laughs> so why aren't we pausing 
and praying and saying, Lord, tell me Mm -hmm. your plan for me Mm -hmm. because his plan never fails. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I don't want to get to heaven and have him say, and I I think we all do to some extent, but I really don't want him to say, Judy, this is the life I had for you. And it didn't happen because you didn't trust or you didn't come to me. And quick thing, another reason why I'm so passionate about helping women. My mother, um, my mother lived what I call an underlived life. Mm. Super smart, raped at 10 oh. by an uncle. Oh my goodness. And it totally put her off course in her mm-hmm. whole life. And that hell and trauma mm-hmm. impacted her marriage to my dad and really just brought her down a negative kind of spiral all of her life. So she was such an influential person in my life. Mm -hmm. And I so am grateful for her. And I'm glad I'm not crying as I'm talking about Mm -hmm. her because she is the most extraordinary woman I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm writing a book. I have many books that I'd love to write, but this is one of them. Living the underlived life. Mm. I never want a woman Mm. to look back and say, wow, Mm. I wished I would have done you know, this or that. Go for it, ladies. Go for it. Go to God with your dream. Let him give you that vision and then just walk in it. Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. And and time, life, this world, it's way too short to live an underlived life, right? We just, we have to go after whatever it is that makes us happy. And trust me, it's going to be hard. Maybe it's going to be weird. Sure. But it's going to be worth it for sure. 100% worth it. (laughs) Absolutely. And that's when you see those miracles happen. Oh, you know, um, you get luckier, quote unquote, um, the smarter you work. Mm -hmm. I used to say the harder you work, but you know, the goal is not to work harder or more hours. It is to work with amazing ladies like you to get your systems in place to, you know, get that revenue and build that business while you sleep. Right. Right. Well, and yeah, that, and just, you know, you are who you surround yourself with. So knowing who those people are that, that can help you like take the burden off your shoulders type of deal, especially when you're running a business, but also who are those people that I can cry to talk to laugh to talk strategies to like, who's that girl gang guy gang, whoever's listening, like who are those people that will continue to support you through the ups and the downs and everything else in life. Um, that community and support is, is pivotal. Yes. It's so pivotal. And especially even more when you're transitioning from like corporate nine to five life into the entrepreneurial life, it's really, really important, but even continuing, um, I mean, I'm sure Tony Robbins has his group of five people that he leans to for everything. And I guarantee you, he would say he wouldn't be where he is without these type of people, right? Like even those on the top, they still have that community that supports them and that keeps them, you know, going after success and succeeding. Right. Absolutely. You're always getting to that next level. You got to keep going yeah, and going. Absolutely. You know, associated with that gang. Absolutely. absolutely. So I always ask this question on my episode because, or on my podcast, because of mainly the name, and I'm always curious to see uh, the responses that I get. So Ambitious AF, um, and the reason we have this name going is really just to um, clarify like what ambition means to different women or different entrepreneurs or just different people in general. So when you hear, you know, you're an ambitious person, or if you consider yourself, I'm an ambitious person, what does that really mean to you? Wow. I just feel like I was born that way. Mm. Like, like if somebody says you can't, I say, oh yeah, step back. Take a picture. <laughs> I'm in, you know? So for me, it was always like, like I said, I was a little girl and I had these big dreams. So ambition is having the drive and determination mm-hmm. to go after your dreams, to go after what you feel called to do. And others can say, you can't do that. Why are you doing that? Who are you? And that may even be yourself, your mm-hmm. negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. But the ambitious person is going to say, uh-uh, nope, not today, and keep going. Yeah. And I always like to give the analogy, um, Caroline, of being in a storm. If there's torrential downpours, I'm the type of person where I'm going to keep going, even if it's two miles an hour. I don't mm-hmm. want to stop mm-hmm. because I know if I keep going, I'm getting to my destination. Mm-hmm. And so I always tell my clients that too. You're ambitious. Yes. You know, sometimes it's take two steps forward, take one step back, but just keep on going. Mm. To me, that's the ambition. That's the drive. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And that's so true. And I say that all the time. Like you have a hard day. You could sit out on your, the couch and slump around and just give up like this, but if you're going to do that, you're not an ambitious person and 
especially entrepreneurial life is definitely not, not for you because we take, we could take 10 steps forward and get a million steps back because that can happen even overnight. But it's that drive, that ambition that obviously keeps us going. And those are the people that are really cut out for this life, but um, also the people that are really going to see that success in every aspect of life, not, not just finances. I'm talking like happiness, pure bliss <laughs> every single day. <laughs> right, right. Because, uh, you know, you're not born a success. Mm -hmm. Nobody is. Everybody starts life the mm -hmm. same. You get to these places of accomplishment only by working and doing your part, mm -hmm. letting God do his. And, you know, it's like, I don't have a plan B. This yeah. is what I'm doing. End of story. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love that. All righty. Well, to wrap up, um, I guess, first off, where can everyone find you? Because um, I love to give shout outs and I want everyone listening to just send you a DM or send you an email or wherever that best location is. So if you can tell everyone first where, where they can find you. Great. I am at Judy Weber Live everywhere. At Judy Weber Live, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, LinkedIn, wherever, wherever that is. And then as you mentioned earlier, Caroline, I have my podcast. Mm -hmm. It is called She Is Extraordinary. And so I'm so excited. I just started last year. Have uh, I just dropped my 120th episode mm. today. Got well over 100 five-star ratings and reviews. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have you let, take a listen and let me know your feedback. Yeah, and I was going to say, go read her reviews. They're outstanding. And you have so many of them, uh, which is absolutely amazing because reviews are, I mean, right? It tells who you are and <laughs> what your podcast is all about. So everyone, please go reach out to Judy with any questions or just to connect or just to say, hey, I listened to you on your podcast and you are freaking phenomenal. But um, <laughs> so to, to wrap anything up, do you have any other like last minute motivation, inspirational tips or anything like that for our listeners? Yes. Well, I just want to say it's been a joy spending time with you. And I want everybody listening to know my heart. If you know me, if you follow me, I also have a Facebook group called She is Extraordinary, so you can check me out there too. Um, but you know my heart is to give. Mm -hmm. So when Caroline says reach out, guaranteed I mm -hmm. will personally respond. Mm -hmm. If you have any question about, oh, I've been afraid to you know, incorporate faith into my mm -hmm. business or what does that look like? I would be overjoyed to connect with you. So please do. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Judy, for coming on. Please go check out her podcast. I was also on reversal. So interviewed there too. Um, and then just please send her a DM. That's how we got connected. And now our no. DM list is huge between voice messages and regular <laughs> text messages. I absolutely love it. So thank you, Judy, once again for coming on and everyone listening that wraps up today, be on the lookout for Wednesday's episode and I will talk to you all soon. See ya. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you got some value or just feel fired up, I would love for you to take a screenshot and tag me in your Instagram stories. It's always so motivating to see you getting the inspiration you needed to level up for my podcast. I'm going to keep showing up and bringing my best self to these episodes, and I encourage you to do the same. If you think a friend or family member would enjoy this episode, I would love for you to share the ambition. I can't wait to chat next week, but until then, keep being ambitious AF.